The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorf. Every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, Allison would like us to build something that she can use with her bike bag. I wonder what it is. Let's get started and find out. But first, the news. Today in Ben News, I'd like to talk about this new redesigned Raspberry Pi portable I'm working on. Now this is the older one that we did as a show episode, and it was pretty cool and all. But I'm working to make a smaller version, and the idea is you'll attach a single PCB, this is the breadboard form, to the Raspberry Pi. And the PCB will have all the controls, switches, and USB port already on it, as well as power charge circuitry for the batteries. And this will basically be the brains, and you'll attach it to the screen, and bam, you're done. So the idea is we can make like a kit for this. Uh, perhaps we'll sell the PCB in the case, and then people can buy the pie and the screen and put it together. I think it'll be a fun little project. It's, uh, it's a cool device. So Ben, my project idea is bike turn signals. I've seen different kinds, like uh, you can put an iPad in your shirt and it'll have turn signals and some other DIY ones with LEDs. And I thought, oh, maybe it'd be fun to make my own. So yeah, I would have LED arrows and they would kind of like blink, blink, blink in the direction that you wanted to turn. Oh, kind of like a traffic sign where they tell you to, the traffic to go one way or the other. Yeah. And they, yeah, it's like two arrows put together, got it. Exactly. Um, and so they would be actuated by two switches that maybe could be mounted on shoulders so you could turn your head and click the switch. Oh, and then the lights would blink for maybe 20 seconds? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Um, maybe if you hit it again, it would turn it off. After or, you do your turn. Yeah, exactly, or restart it. Anyway, so it would mount to um, a backpack, so it would obviously need to be battery powered, and then I've heard of the Arduino lily pad. It's supposed to mm -hmm. be sewable or more crafty or something. Well, I mean, you could sew anything, anything if you wanted, but yeah, it's like circular shape, you know, so it's softer. Okay. And some people like use conductive thread to connect it to things. So yeah, we can get one and use it. It'd be fine. All right, cool. Um, so basically at the back of the patch, if you will, because it'll be like a patch for your backpack that'll mm -hmm. be removable. There'll be the LEDs, the spot for a battery, and then the microcontroller. Oh, that's what MCU stands for. <laughs> well, this seems pretty doable. Um, if you want to start on the actual physical patch itself, then bring it in here and I can help you wire it up and program it. All right, cool. While Allison is hashing out the designs for her back patch, I'm going to 3D print a mount for these sub-miniature snap action switches. So it can kind of sit on your shoulder here and we'll cover it with cloth, but it'll be good to give it some rigidity. Hey, look what I found. Oh, a backpack. Yeah, I can make the patch to Velcro on to this and then you can make those switches that you're just talking about. Yeah, it'll all be one piece. Yeah. Awesome. Score. Mm. All right, so I did it. Oh, it's a robot. Yeah, there was a lot of empty space, so I thought, well, oh, I'll draw a robot on there. You Makes know? perfect I mean, sense. Why not? Yeah, because of the room for the components. Oh, the yeah, back. the batteries, and there's your precious uh, lily pad Arduino. Yeah, um, and then the little shoulder switches, too. Oh, nice, and they've got cloth in them, too. So how did you put all this together? I'm so glad you asked. The process of making the patch was similar to any other thing that we build on the show. I laid out my tools and parts, and then I started thinking about the design, which required taking measurements based on the placement of the LEDs, the Arduino lily pad, as well as the battery pack. Using that information, I know how large the fabric pieces need to be. I'll cut those out, not using a CNC machine, not using a laser. Still, it'll be pretty similar to most of the other things we make need a front piece, a rear piece, as well as a piece of interfacing, which is a thicker material that will make the whole thing more rigid. The pieces will stack together like so. And you can see that interfacing there in the center. Now it's time to pull out my 90-year-old sewing machine. That's right, 90 years old. So I want a holder for the battery pack, as well as to sew the three pieces together. Using my pinking shears to make it look a little nicer and to keep the edges from fraying. 
Now it's time to install the grommets. I'm placing them an inch apart here. This is where the LEDs will go. I've punched out the holes. Now it's time to install the grommets themselves. Pretty simple, you just hammer them in. And it gives it a nice, clean, finished look. Now time for more measuring, cutting, and you guessed it, sewing. Now I'm making the shoulder pads that the switches will go on. I could have sewed the switches to the little shoulder pads, but no, I'm going with hot glue. Much faster and it'll stay there for a million years. I wanted to cover the switches with fabric, make them easier to push, as well as nicer looking. So I cut out more squares and encase them, attaching the fabric to the shoulder pad using more hot glue. I wanted to make it look a little cooler, so I got to work sprucing it up. That was a great flashback. Yeah, yeah it was, but back to us in the present. So what we should do is mount the LEDs, okay. wire them up to our circuitry, and then program it. So let's see how an LED is going to look in one of his eyes. Here. Awesome. I got these blue LEDs so it doesn't look like a Terminator. Yeah, like I mean a, we could just do the eyes red, but yeah, that might be a little too sinister. Liquid metal. Yeah, that should show up good at night. All right, let's get started. All right, so hold it in place and make sure the oh, long shoot. lead is on the left. Okay. Yeah, okay, there we go. Just and the long lead is a... Positive. Okay, I had no idea. Yeah, our capacitors, well, electrolytic capacitors at least, are the same way. Okay. Of course, an LED, it's not labeled, so they have to make one longer so you can see it visually. And you hold that in place a little bit longer. Okay. Because if you're using like metal, the Hot glue is obviously based off heat, not uh, chemicals or uh, reactions. So something porous like cloth, it sticks to it really well, but the cloth doesn't sink much heat out of it, so it takes longer for it to cool down. Okay. Versus metal, where the metal just sucks all the heat out, like a heat sink. <gasps> so when you're using LEDs in your project, if you don't necessarily know the formula, just go online, search for LED calculator. You input the LEDs forward voltage, its current, which is usually around 20 milliamps, and the source voltage. So in this case, we have five volt source. These are 3.4 volt LEDs, 20 milliamps current, which means we need around 82 ohms of resistance. So <laughs> 75 is the closest. Okay. What's so funny? Resistance is futile. The largest online community for engineers, Element 14, and one of engineering's most brilliant minds, Jeremy Bloom, are partnering to boost your Arduino skills. Jeremy's new book, Exploring Arduino, contains Arduino exercises and lists the parts needed to master them. Here to review his book is Jeremy Bloom. This book is awesome. Thanks, Jeremy. Visit element14.com forward slash exploring Arduino to get his book, plus exclusive access and pricing for the parts. Expert inspiration from fellow electronic enthusiasts and one of the internet's most active Arduino communities, go to element14.com forward slash exploring Arduino today. Give us any project, we'll make it. Give us any chance, we'll take it. We're gonna make this project come true. <laughs> Doing it our way. Hey, that'd be cool if we worked at a beer factory. But you probably don't remember that show. Now I have to make sure that I kind of reverse the way that I wire this because I drew the diagram from the front, but I'm wiring it from the back, so I have to flip it in my brain. That's okay, because I can do that with my brain. All right, so I got these Velcroed onto the bag. And they line up to your chin. Yeah, they do. What about you? Are you almost done there, or what? I'm getting there. <laughs> got almost all the LEDs wired on, then I can actually connect the data signals, and then we'll be pretty much ready to test it. All right. We can just program it directly with my laptop. So why is it wired up to this pin? Well, there's a ground on everything. So the ground is universal, and then all the signals will be separate. I will attach those next. Oh, OK. But I'm just wiring all the LEDs kind of as a flat matrix, just so they're in place. Jeez, it's kind of spooky in here. I know, totally spooky. 
So here's what I did. I made it so the default state is to have the lights dim and it pulses them rapidly to make them dimmer. Okay. That's called pulse width modulation. And so when you go in a direction, they'll, they'll be bright, right? And you can yeah. still turn them off. But then after you're done, it just reverts back to being dim. Okay. So being dim is the default state. Because I figured you're going to use this at night, so you're probably going to always want a light on. Unless, of course, the power source is disconnected. And I also increased the amount of time it would blink left and right. So I think what we'll do next is hook up the battery pack and attach it to the backpack. I'm going to use this uh, Molex connector for the power. I'm going to attach it right to the lily pad and then the batteries will hook into that. And we'll put a capacitor on it as well to help smooth out the power for the batteries. So the next step is finding out where that's going to be Velcroed onto this so that we can judge how much wire we need and then hook up the switches. Yeah, we don't want, any, we don't want more wire than we need, so yes. All right. That is the next step. Yeah, I'm thinking we can just put it, you know, right on this front pocket. Actually, why don't you put it on so we can see how much it moves around. Got it? Okay. And you can reach the switches with your chin. Yep. Okay, hold still. Oh, it looks like there's like a pouch here, so I'm going to have to come down around that mm -hmm. and over. Okay, it looks like pretty much the entire length of the wire, so. All right. All right, that's what we use. I always like to put both sides of the Velcro together, then peel off the back, and then stick it where I want it. That way you know that it's right. Beep. Okay, so our LEDs are here. Our lily pad is here. We have a capacitor and a plug hooking that up to the battery pack. Switch is right there. So we will put it in place on the bag. And it's got the wires hooked up too. So yeah, the idea is you just clip this to whatever other bag or jacket you have. You know, and that way you can take it off if it's raining or, you know, if you don't feel like wearing it out to dinner, whatever it may be. Hey, you're like the rocketeer. <laughs> we don't got a house, Cliff, we got a gazebo. All right, turn that way. All right, try uh, one of your shoulder buttons. Okay, you're turning right. Try turning left. Nice. <laughs> Cool, well, I think if you test it out in the dark, that'll be even better. All right, sounds good. Today's viewer question comes from Skip, who asks, I'm building a compact printer bot, and I was wondering if your Raspberry Pi portable could be used as the front end to control it instead of a laptop. Yes. You'll need to Google Rep Wrap Printing from Raspberry Pi, and you'll find several articles describing how to make it work. Rep Wrap is a generic type of printer that most home built printers, as well as the printer bot, are derived from. What you need is the Print Run, also called Pronterface program, that would normally run on your PC. You're going to get a Debian Linux version of that, so you can use it on the Raspberry Pi. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, I'll share my tips and tricks for designing cool cases and creating attractive form factors for your projects. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.